In this video, we will look at spawning in layout and dynamically creating nav mesh surfaces during runtime. How to check when an agent has reached its destination for a turn based game. Setting area costs and adding AI randomness for multiple characters. If you want to follow along with this video, ensure AI Navigation version 2 is installed from the package manager along with the samples. We will also be using assets which you can download from the links in the video description below. You can create a nav mesh at runtime. This gives several benefits, especially in dynamic or procedurally generated environments, as you can generate or modify the nav mesh when the game starts or even during gameplay, rather than relying on a pre baked static nav mesh created in the Unity editor. In the maze scene, there is a blank floor. We want to spawn in a maze layout and dynamically create a nav mesh surface during play mode. There is a script attached to the floor with two layouts, which can be found in the maze folder and maze layouts. Double click on layout 1 to enter the prefab. We need to add a nav mesh surface object for the player. We will not bake the surface, but create a script to generate the nav mesh surface during play mode. Create a script called build nav mesh script. It should use the AI namespace. We are going to be accessing the nav mesh surface component, so add a require component above the class to ensure it is added to any object you attach to script to. Add a variable to store the nav mesh surface, then create two variable arrays for characters and spawn points. In the await method, get the nav mesh surface component from the object. Then in the start method, create a nav mesh surface by using build nav mesh. We will wait until the end of the frame before spawning in the characters, giving the nav mesh surface time to be baked. Start a coroutine to spawn characters. In an I enumerator, add a yield that waits until the end of the frame. Create a for loop that spawns in the characters at the set spawn points. We need to create a second nav mesh surface for the chomper characters. These have a different agent using different settings, so each surface is tailored to the different agent settings. Now add the build nav mesh script to both player and enemy nav mesh surface objects. Create prefabs from the player and chomper characters from the 3D game kit. The player has the click to move script found in the samples and scripts folder. This has been modified to include running and idle animations which have been added to our animation controller. The chomper should have the random walk script from the samples folder. Set the range to 50. Now in the maze one layout, the player can be added under characters and there is already a player spawn point. For the enemies, add three slots and drag in three chompers. Add the three spawn points. During play mode, the maze is spawned in and the nav mesh surface is immediately created. Then the characters are spawned in and can navigate the maze. You can repeat the process for the second maze layout. Nav mesh surfaces can also be created during gameplay. In this case, when the character picks up this red object, the maze structure will change and the nav mesh surface will be rebaked over a single frame. I am using the new script that features the rebake on a single frame when the player collects the rock. Here, I am using build nav mesh. However, that generates the entire nav mesh from scratch. Where a nav mesh simply needs to be updated, we can use update nav mesh instead. This then focuses only on the regions that have changed, making it a less costly process and less taxing on the frame rate. In the inspector, parts of the maze have been added to the arrays to be switched on or off, along with the nav mesh surfaces to rebake. During play mode, the player collects the rock, the maze layout is changed, and the nav mesh surface is immediately rebaked. Rebaking nav mesh surfaces during runtime can be processor intensive, so only rebake when necessary. Let's talk about how we can set up a turn based game. Player 1 finishes their move, then player 2 moves, etc. For this, we need to detect when the player has reached their target. I am in the terrain scene and I have added assets from the 3D Game Kit Environment Pack. I have Ellen and multiple Chomper characters from the 3D Game Characters Pack in the scene as well. Create a nav mesh surface object for the humanoid character and bake. Create a second nav mesh surface object for the chomper and bake. The chompers will auto detect Ellen by setting Ellen's tag to player. Now we need to modify the click to move script. Add a ball to check the agent's remaining distance. This is set to false to begin with. 
Then we need to add a player's turn bool. Now it's set to public because it will be accessed by the AI target script. This bool lets the AI characters know if it is their turn to move or the player's turn to move. We don't want this to be visible in the inspector, so hide it in the inspector. Add a time between moves variable that can be changed in the inspector. This is the AI target's move time. Currently they have 4 seconds to complete their move. Add a private variable to store the current move time for the AI target. In the start method set the current move time to equal the time between moves. In the update, in this if statement, add another condition of player's turn. This ensures the player can only move when it is the player's turn. After the player has clicked to move, start a coroutine to check destination. This waits 0.5 seconds to wait for the character to start moving before checking if the player has reached the destination point. If check remain distance is true, and if the agent's remain in distance, which gets the agent's current distance along its path, this is shown in the debug view as the red line on the ground, which shows the remain in distance to the target point is less than or equal to the agent stopping distance plus 0.1 then the agent has reached its destination. Set player's move to false, letting the AI characters know that it is now their turn to move. Set the check remaining distance ball to false. Else, if the agent hasn't yet reached its destination, return. If player's turn is equal to false, then we need to time the AI characters move. Create a timer countdown by minusing time.delta time from the current move time, which counts down one second at a time. If current move time is less than or equal to zero, then set player's turn back to true and reset the current move time to time between moves. Add an IE numerator for the check destination. This waits 0.5 seconds before setting check remaining distance to true, starting the check to see if the player has reached their destination point. For the chomper character, I have added idle and walk animations to its animator with an is walking ball between the two. In previous videos, we created an AI target script that controls the AI characters, allowing them to target the player. If you have not yet watched the previous videos and want to follow along, Pause the video and create the script. Ensure it is attached to the Chomper prefab. Modify the AI target script on the Chomper characters to find the player character based on the player tag and set it as the target. Get the click to move script from the target character and check if player's turn is false. This means the Chomper characters can now start their move. Set is stop to false, allowing them to move. Set the animator ball of is walking to true, so the Chomper characters start walking. Under the else condition, set the is walking ball to true. Set another else condition when player's turn is true. The agent is stopped is set to true, stopping the agent from moving. And set the is walking ball of the animator to false to play the idle animation. Now during play mode, it checks when the player has finished a move, allowing the chompers to do their move, creating a turn based game. The chompers move time is currently 4 seconds, but can be adjusted in the inspector. Area costs help control how an AI agent prefers or avoids certain parts of the navigation mesh, affecting the overall path it chooses. Each area in the nav mesh can be assigned a specific cost that represents how expensive it is for agents to travel through that area. The AI will then consider these costs when deciding the optimal path to reach its destination. We want to use area costs to make the water surface walkable but at a much higher cost. Characters always try to find the path with the least cost to travel. In the navigation tab, define a new area called water, and we will set the area cost for this to five. We also want the jumper characters to jump off the pier, so set the drop height to four and jump distance to five. Add a nav mesh modifier component to the water object and set the override area type to water. To create off mesh links for the jumps, we need to check the generate links checkbox on the nav mesh surface object. Now bake, and we see the water surface is using a different area cost. We can see off mesh links on the pier. Generate links assigns the area type covered by the arrows as jump, which is a preset area type, causing the chompers to jump from the pier into the water. During play mode, all the chompers head toward the pier, as this has the lower cost. When the player gets closer to this landmass, the chompers use that instead.
However, none of the chompers are trying to cross the water because of the high cost. The AI characters are all moving at the same speed and clumping together too closely. We can modify the NavMesh agent settings for the characters to add variety by changing priority. A value closer to zero has higher priority meaning those characters can push others out of the way. We can also create random sizes of radius to add extra space in between characters and create random speeds for each character. Modify the AI target script. In the start method we will change the agent speed by setting the animation speed to a random range between 0.6 and 1.6. The nav mesh agent speed is being controlled by the animation speed, so here adjusting the animation speed will adjust the agent speed. This will make some characters faster and some slower, giving variety. Set the agent avoidance priority to a random range between 10 and 65 so some of them can push others out of the way. Set the agent radius to a random range between 0.5 and 0.8, rounded to within one decimal point. This will create different amounts of space between the chomper characters. Set the player's priority to 5 to allow her to push enemies out of the way. During play mode, we see the characters are more spaced apart. They are moving at different speeds and the player can push them out of the way. Now we have a nice variety. To find out more, click on the link in the video description below. Thanks for watching.